Let's grade the Badgers. Let's look back at the season that was, um, which players exceeded expectations, which ones maybe fell a little short. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. My day is going great because I got Rajiv on the show. Uh, we asked Justin to be here for this one, but he said, quote, basketball tea talks, leave me alone. <laughs> he's, he's he's done with basketball. He is not going to talk basketball, I think, ever again until next season. <laughs> yeah, so he's in a detox center for basketball fans, but that's cool. Um, we got Rajiv on the show. We're going to do uh, a bit of a, a look back at the season, grading every player, and a couple things of note grading every player based on what we expected them to do. So kind of based on our preseason expectations of who these guys are. So they're not all, all graded on the same scale, which I think makes for kind of an interesting discussion. Uh, we got team MVP, great guard grade. If we have a few minutes, I might ping Rajiv on his favorite game and his least favorite game of the season as well. I just did a show on that. There's, there's, It's a season of highs and lows, man. <laughs> it is absolutely a season of highs and lows. Literally Jekyll and Hyde all year. Yeah. I mean, it was just this, but yeah. Do you know, uh, really quick on that note before I get into this, Michigan lost 14 of their last 15 games? That I mean, that's clearly already is my answer for the worst lot. There's nothing, yeah. there's no game even close to that. Well, yes, actually, well, James Madison. James so Madison. That, that's the question, because I want James Madison won. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Because, well, I I would still probably say Michigan because of how disappointing it was in the moment, because we were playing a little better. And, you know, but James Madison – Honestly, they're probably equal. They really are. I mean, James Madison carries more weight because it's in the tournament, but just both incredibly awful losses. I mean, let's just put it that way. The Michigan one's almost an all-timer, right? Like, it doesn't mean much because it's in the middle of the year, but you lost to a team that lost 14 of 15 games down the stretch and fired their coach, and we're the only team they beat for, like, yeah. that's like a two-and-a-half-month stretch of losing every single game. So bad. Just so bad. I don't know what the hell we were doing that game. Horrible, 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 horrible. So anyway, let, let's <clears> talk about that one. Let, let's talk grades. So how we're going to do this, Rajiv and I will take turns kicking off w- with our initial grades. The community did a bunch of stuff on the Discord. I was going to get everyone's community grades in this show. I just didn't have time, and I apologize. But I'll follow up with everybody's community grade, and we'll see where ours compared to theirs. Um, so we're going in reverse order from minutes played. And again, these grades are based on what you thought the player would do before the year. So it's kind of based on preseason expectations. Rajiv, I'll let you kick off the first one. Kamari McGee. What's your grade on Kamari McGee? So Kamari M- McGee gets an A for me because expectations, again, this is, it's a really interesting way to look at this discussion because grading these players would be one thing, but grading them based on my expectations is another. So I like this discussion, but it's an A for me because I really didn't know what we'd get at him. I did think he was going to back up Chucky. Um, and I think he did that, but I think every time he was on the floor, he gave good energy. He gave good de- defense. Like obviously he was hurt, but I feel like he overextended my expectations. He exceeded them, which is why I think he's an A because I expected him to be a part of it, but I did not expect him to be as critical when he played. And I think he was. So for me, it's an A for McGee. I, I'm still not sure with McGee. Like, I still don't know if he, if, if he played a really big part in some of those wins or if it was just like some weird um, sample size stuff, right? Where like we seem to play better when he was there, but he, he only played 25 games and he played a total of 8.8 minutes per game in the games he played. So I want to be like, I think it's solid. He outplayed my expectations. I think for, for me, for it to be an A, I think I would have had to see a more consistent role. Like, uh, but he exceeded my expectations. I thought there was a chance this was a kind of a wasted scholarship. I hate to say it, but I kind of thought going into the season, it might be, a, and it wasn't that he's not that. So Which I, is why I'm actually surprised your grade's not higher because remember preseason, you really didn't think he was going to see the floor much at all. And we had that discussion actually one time about it. And and I think that like, because had he not gotten hurt, where I mean, he would have been a huge part of this, this team the entire season. So I think that has to kind of play into it. And I think everyone's expectations were so much lower that – I think he gave he gave good minutes. He did. I think he there's really not a lot you can point to and be like, oh, he was bad. He he just he didn't have a lot of opportunity. But when he was in there, I think he played really well. No, and that's very fair. Like I I didn't know if he would even play, but the fact of the matter is he still didn't play much, right? And that's the kind of thing that holds me yeah. back. Like if he had if he had carved out a more consistent 10, 12, 13 minutes per game role, because if I'm looking at A, that means he like blew past my expectations. I'm shocked. I think he had to give a little bit more for me to get into that stratosphere. But he absolutely exceeded my expectations. I thought he was great energy off the bench. Got to the free throw line 
oddly mm-hmm. more than he should as like a smaller guard. He really would get in the paint and throw his body into people. So I'm going to go B, um, but I get the point for a higher grade. Absolutely. Uh, let's shift to Connor. I'll start on this one. Uh, I went D. And I, I can already hear people saying, like, it should almost be an F based on preseason expectations. But the only reason I'm – yes, <laughs> to, to be fair, expected much, much, much more from Connor. But I, I guess the one thing is it, he never let it become, like, a cancerous thing in the locker room. Like, it could have been so much worse. We've seen players on the football side just quit in the middle of the season because they don't like where they are in the rotation. You know, quit and say, I'm going to go to the portal. I'm done with the team. That's the only reason I'm giving in a D is he didn't let it – impact the, the culture in the locker room but yeah it's a d for me on connor i mean the connor's a little hard for me because i feel like he didn't really get the opportunities that we wanted him to get especially earlier in the earlier in the season he had his early back injury i'm giving this c minus um because i think had he had more minutes he would have produced more now yes defensively there were issues which is why he didn't play when he came in he didn't necessarily take all his opportunities but there were games where he did impact things and he he was fruitful off the bench uh, so for me, C minus only because opportunity was there, right? Like you just, we don't really know. It's kind of like, I almost wanted to give this grade an incomplete because you you can't really judge too much because he just never saw the floor. And we can obviously, that goes to the guard discussion and whether or not he should have seen the floor more. So for me, it's a C minus, but I understand the D and I understand the Fs too, because he obviously from an expectation perspective, but for me, it's definitely below average, but you just, it's hard because we don't know how much he would have played. So I'm curious, and we didn't really talk about this. I'm curious where you're looking at the scale. So for me, a C is like they met my expectations. A B is like they exceeded, and an A is like they well exceeded. Yeah, I mean, for me, I kind of looked at things like, okay, yeah, C being average, but if they if they if they met my expectations and they played pretty well, then I kind of went above a C because I it's hard to give someone a C if like they met my expectations. But I was I definitely if you, if you did not meet my expectations, you definitely dropped. But Connor was just difficult for me because. There was so much unknown with him. I really honestly wanted to give him an incomplete because I just I don't I didn't really know how to grade that because you just never saw it. But isn't that the grade itself if you never yes. saw it? Isn't it? it like, is. He's ninth in the team in minutes played. I, okay, I, but, but do you agree he should have had more minutes? But that's not really this discussion, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe ah. into the great guard grade for sure. Yeah. Um no, listen, your grades are your grades, man. I I would if if Connor had a C minus season, I don't think he's in the portal. Um, yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, I, this is another one I didn't send you over on a text, but he did play the eighth most minute, eighth most minute. So I do want to throw him out there. Uh, Carter Gilmore. Oh, Carter Gilmore. Um, <clears throat> I'd say probably a C minus for me for Gilmore. Um, definitely. I mean, he his expectations are never that high, right? We don't expect him to be a great offensive player, but I did expect him to be a little bit better offensively. He always gave good effort, which is why I'm never going to grade the guy super low because effort's always there and effort's a big thing for me. So I'm going to go C minus on Gilmore because he definitely underperformed offensively. Like there was literally no growth offensively and that's kind of unacceptable at this point. There needs to be more growth. I think that's fair. I, I went C for I, Car- he just he meant exactly what I thought he would be basically like I didn't really expect offensive growth but I expected the effort as you said to me he's just a C he did what I thought he would do and not really much more but not really much less so I'm gonna go see with Connor um all right we're gonna take a quick break here we got kind of three players in each of the these segments and then we'll finish up the great guard team MVP uh we're gonna come up with uh Dirk and we'll get we'll get Rajiv's grade for Dirk Nolan Dirk the Winsky winter. <laughs> we're going to get that great coming up next. But first, we're going to take a quick break for our friends of the show over on the Amazon Fire Stick, Amazon Fire TV. Again, this is something Rajiv and I have talked about. Rajiv uses I've used this. Um, it's simple. It's easy. It's We live in a – Rajiv, man, you remember growing up, what were chan, what was your channel selection like growing up? <laughs> like five different things. <laughs> it was like nothing. And what a time to be alive. Like, listen, I'm not going to pretend our, our era doesn't have its foibles and its issues, but – it also has Amazon Fire TV, which gives you almost all the sports you want. Simple user interface. Plug it into your smart TV. They also have Fire TV channels that deliver a constant supply of videos, favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes also at Locked On Network, so you can get more of Rajiv when he's on the show. And who doesn't want some more RC over there? So go <laughs> check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. That's Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV, your sports destination. Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. 
and yeah, I was the same way. I we had like Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, and I think we had PBS. That was that was it. Yeah, now there's so much more, and there's every streaming platform and everything you can do. I love Fire TV, honestly. It's where I, all my TVs have a Fire Stick. Yep, it's so easy. All right, let's let's jump in this one. I'll let you kick this one off. Uh, Nolan Winter. <laughs> I'm gonna go B minus, um, and. I wanted him to play more. Of course, I think there's minutes issues there, but he's a freshman. I think, I think he's going to be great. You know, I love him. I think he has a ton of skill, tons of upside. He needs to get bigger. He needs to get stronger, but I feel like for the most part, he met my expectations and he exceeded them a little bit in the sense that when I think about him and like Gus, obviously Gus didn't even see the floor. Like he played valuable minutes. He backed up the five. He was really the only guy that could back up the five. So I felt like in that regard, coming in there, playing critical minutes when our guys were in foul trouble, I think he exceeded my expectations, not a ton. So I'm going to go B minus. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm at. I'm at B minus as well. Um, I remember when we did preseason like projections, we were trying to project out like how many minutes each player would get, right? And I thought Yaldon would be the backup five. And I thought, I was like, I don't think Winter's going to play this year. So in that sense, he exceeded my expectation. Mm -hmm. Some of it was because of necessity, uh, but he, he did. I thought he, two things with Winter that I really liked. I thought he, he really did compete. Like there were moments in the games against Edie, against other bigs. Like he was fighting. Like he, some of, I wish Crawl would have a little bit more of that. Like Winter wasn't ready for it, but like I thought he showed heart, Rajiv. Like I really thought he showed some, some, some care factor. And then uh, his total rebounding rate, if you go look at his percentage of rebounds that he grabbed when it was available, he's at 11.8%, which for context, Tyler was at 11.9%. Wow. Like, so when he was out there from a rebounding standpoint, he was giving you basically what, you know, upperclassman fifth year Tyler Wall is giving you. So I think there's building blocks there. He exceeded my expectations because um, mine were pretty low. As, and it's really more of a reflection of the fact that he's a, a thin freshman than anything with Went Nolan Winter himself. So I want to be minus as well. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, he's, he's, he's Dirk in training. I mean, he's going to be great. Just give him uh, some time. <laughs> Find a different person to compare him to. He's like, John. and now it's now it's just part of the shtick. So I just have to keep going with it. Yeah, no, it definitely is. All right, we're gonna move on to John Blackwell. I'll leave this one off. I, I have a plus. I mm -hmm. honestly, goodness, I remember we did again that rotation show. We we were on the fence of whether he was literally going to play this year. Like, is this guy gonna red shirt? Is he gonna play? I think we settled on he's probably gonna play, but it's gonna be like five minutes in this game, and then he won't play the next game. And he became our sixth man. And not just our six man, he he shot 45% from three. He he was second on the team in free throw rate. Like the, the percentage of the times he's able to get to the free throw and behind only AJ Store. As a freshman, that's ridiculous. He shot 82% from the line. Are like, are you kidding me? His turnover rate was really low. I thought he looked like a future star, and I didn't know if he would play this year, so I'm going A-plus on, on Blackwell. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if you'd have told me that Connor was going to average three points a game and he was going to average eight, like I'd have been like, you're crazy. Um, he far exceeded expectations. It is an A-plus. If you could have a higher grade, I would give it a higher grade. Like There's there's literally no grade that's going to be higher on this sheet. He deserves all the accolades. He, I'm so glad he's a Badger, and he's going to be so critical for us for years to come. Do you think he starts next year? Um, probably. Yeah. I mean, because I think that he's only going to get better. He's going to hopefully take leaps in the off season and he's the control that he carries on the court. That's something that you and I've talked about this a couple of times. He just has that control and he's able to, you know, he doesn't really take bad shots. He makes good decisions and he's only going to get better. So yeah, I think he does need to be in the starting lineup. I would like it, but here's the problem. I think they probably get Fiddler, right? Uh, as a three. And then you have Klesman and, and Hepburn back at the one and two. I, I've said this for a while. I think Klesman is better off the – I would almost rather have him off the bench and Black will start. I don't know if – would Guard do that? I don't know. I think you're right, though, because, I mean, especially with Klesman going nuclear you know, a few times throughout the season, like you want that guy off the bench. He can come out come out and change the game. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you on that one. All right, um, I'm going to kick this one to you to start. Let's go – this is an interesting one to me. Let's go Tyler Wall. Tyler Wall. So I have a B- minus for Tyler Wall. Um, it, this is tough. This is another tough one because like, kind of like what you said about the C sort of being expectations, I feel like he pretty much met them, but I was happy with the effort. So I gave him a little bit higher than a C. He didn't really exceed them. He didn't really not meet them. I felt like he was right where I expected him to be. I did expect a little bit more offensively at times, but you know, he was hurt. He had the knee injury, all these things. So he's the guy that look, I love Tyler wall. I think he's, if everyone played with Tyler walls effort, we'd be a lot better off. 
Um, so he's a guy that, you know, just once again, did what he's supposed to do. He played hard defensively. He was creative around the rim. He took over games when he needed to ex- slightly exceeded my expectations. I would say so B minus. I went C plus. I, I expected a lot from wall this year and I felt like there was inconsistencies in the game a little, a little too. So I think inconsistencies are more forgivable. I forgive is the wrong word. We don't need, none of these players need to be forgiven, but are more understandable as a younger player, sure. an older player, like as a veteran player, I need you to be a little more consistent. There were 16 games this year uh, where Tyler wall didn't score in t- 10 points. I think some of that's being hurt, but like, that's part of it too. You know, like some of that's not bad. Be, that's tough. Like down the stretch, he kind of fell apart. And in games where we really needed him, he I don't think he showed up. Um, I agree with you on the effort. Like, there's never a game where I'm like, man, I don't know if Tyler Wall played hard. There's right. a lot of other guys on this team that where there was a game or two and you're kind of like, mm, I thought you could have maybe. I, I never did that with Wall. Like, that dude's flying around the court. He's got some of that crabbing off in him, right, where he's bruised wits in him, where he's jumping around. He's on the floor. He's battling, but. I expect a more offensive consistency. Um, we're gonna we're gonna miss him. We're really gonna miss that that kind of consistent effort. And the other guys need to step up and replace that because that's that's something that doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. And it's something that we're really gonna miss. We missed it when Davidson left. Like that was a huge loss for us. And we're gonna miss we're gonna miss Tyler Ball for the same thing. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think that's well said. Um, really quick, I'll, I'll read you off the grades that Wall got from the community. And again, I didn't get this all calculated, but I did for Wall. Um, his total GPA, if you average it up, is about 2.3, so a low C. He had a range from 1A, but then a ton of Cs, a D, another D. So, you know, I think a lot of people are a little frustrated with maybe the consistent offensive output or the scoring. Yeah, but- I mean, I, and I I hear that. I understand that. I think, I think you know, he definitely had some more injury concerns here and there, and I think that, that he was banged up a little bit throughout the season. But for the most part, yeah, I, I understand why people were disappointed because – you would think that final year he takes a big, you know, sort of leap and, and produced more offense. But here, here's where I'll get back to this, and we're going to get more into this. People are probably waiting for my Crowell grade. Um, <laughs> we're going to get more into this, though, with Crowell. Some of that is expectation. Like, if you were coming into this, you're expecting Tyler Wall to be a 14, 15, 16 point a game consistent scorer. That probably shouldn't have been your expectation for him based on what he had done. Because he hadn't really sh- – that's not his game. Um, I don't know. Again, going back to expectation, I'm going to do Klesman. We'll start here. We'll go to Klesman. I got B-plus on Kles. I Because I think coming into the year, I really feel like Klesman coming into this year is a, a glue guy, a Josh Gosser type, you know, a defense first guy who can hit some open shots. I never would have expected a stretch of games where he goes nuclear and honestly carries the offense for a four or five game stretch. You know, uh, I think offensively he did better than I thought defensively maybe even a little worse than i thought but overall i give him a b plus because i think he exceeded what i thought he would be able to do completely agree I actually went a little higher when a minus because I mean, he averaged 10 points a game like he did go nuclear and that's the reason he's in the a line for me because no one expected that like i there's not a badger fan out there i'd love to hear if there are no one expected him to be able to to score 20 points like that against iu and and even do what he did against james madison to frankly keep us in the game at, at one point in that tournament game so yeah, I think because of that, he exceeded expectations. Now, you could argue that maybe defensively he dropped off a little bit from expectations, but for me, A- minus because without him, we lose a couple more games. That's a great point on the JMU game, too. Um, there's a short list of players that you feel like showed up for that one. Yeah, and he definitely did. And he did. <laughs> husband did. Uh, we're going to come back with the top three, including um, some interesting thoughts on Chucky Hepburn, Stephen Krell, AJ Storr. Great guards, final grade. Who's the team MVP? Um, so good stuff still coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Listen, if if you want to make any type of bet, any type of sports book action, FanDuel.com slash locked on place to do it. And Rajiv, is there any reason you will bet against UConn at any point for the foreseeable future? I mean, you can't. They just crush every team every week. <laughs> That's an absolute monster. I, I've said it before. I said it on a show a couple weeks ago. I just have been betting – um, money lines are first half lines on UConn, and it's ba- it's just like eventually. Listen, we know it. We're, we've all bet before. Eventually, that runs out, but I don't know when. <laughs> like they're so it's, good. The matchup. I'm really interested to see the FanDuel line um, on the if Purdue and UConn meet, which I think they probably will. That's going to be really interesting because Edie and Klingon matchup. I mean, uh-huh. Purdue is the one team that theoretically can slow them down just because they are very quick. They've got good defenders all over the floor, and Edie can can at least hold Klingon down a little bit. What do you think the line will be if, if they get there? Which isn't a guarantee, but UConn minus. Yeah, six. I would say minus. I would say minus like five and a half. Okay, 
six is what popped in my head. So, yeah, we're on kind of the same page there. If you want to do any of that action, go to fanduel.com slash locked on, the official sports betting site of the Locked On Network, an incredibly easy to use uh, user interface, fast, simple. The money payouts are incredible. So, go to fanduel.com slash locked on. All right, Rajiv, let's finish this one off. Um, I think I let off on the last one. I'll let you kick off. AJ Store's next. And again, we're kind of just going in order of minutes played. So, there's no kind of that's the re- rhyme and reason of the ordering. AJ Store. Yeah, A minus for me for AJ Store. Definitely on the A line because I mean, look, he did what we expected him to do, and he exceeded that. He became our offense. He became the sole guy. I mean, he averaged almost seventeen points a game. There were things why he doesn't have an A for me is because I was frustrated at times with his shot selection, as you guys know, and some of the turnovers that he had, and just kind of some of the sort of erratic play at times. But that doesn't mean he didn't exceed my expectations. He absolutely did. So he definitely belongs on the A-line. I'm going to go A-minus just because there were a couple things that I wished wouldn't have happened. Uh, But the guy was massive for us. I mean, without him, who knows where we were. So A-minus. Yeah. Most people in Discord are with you on the A-line. Store is A, A, B, A, A plus, B plus, A minus, A minus, B, B minus, B. So most people are on the A-line. I'm actually going B plus um, because I think defensively it was a big disappointment. And I really – I, again, I remember specifically offseason, I talked about AJ Store, and one of the things I talked about was I think this gives us a plus wing defender, which we don't have, like a bigger wing guy that can take the the, the small forwards in the Big Ten and play with them. Um, I think he hurt us more. I just want to get the bat out of the way because then I want to give AJ flowers too here. Mm-hmm. I think he hurt us more defensively than we've talked about. And I think it put us – we talked a lot about the drop-off of guys like Hepburn and Klesman with a perimeter defense. I wonder what that looks like if they have a better perimeter wing next to them. I, I just think it impacted them more than we've talked about. And I don't think it was a coincidence. We added most of last year's team and then AJ star and our defense fell off the cliff. I, I really don't think that's a coincidence and that matters. Like it's, it, that's a huge part of basketball. Now on the flip side, I give him a B plus because offensively he was at times a, a force that impacted everything we did. And just like, I think it, there's a chain effect defensively. I don't think we talked enough about, the impact offensively he had on the other guys. Because now the, the best perimeter defender is not guarding Chucky Eppern anymore. It's not guarding Max Klesman, right? It's guarding AJ Store. Teams are game planning for AJ Store, which opens everything up for everybody else. So I, it's a B plus. I, he was better offensively than I thought he would be. He was worse defensively, but he absolutely made us a lot better. And um, he's, listen, he's parlaying that into a big payday, a big, a big NIL deal, and good for him. So I'm saying B plus, but I do think there's some elements there that, haven't been talked about enough. I think your your point about defense is very fair. I mean, that clearly was an issue for us all year. And I, I didn't take that into account as much because he was so impactful offensively. And without him, I mean, yeah, I, I have no concept of what our record would have been. And I feel like that because of that, like he, he inched up to that a line for me. Uh, I think it's very fair. There, there's absolutely no argument there. All right, let's go. Um, Crowell. I'll take that one. I don't even know why I laugh. Like, I don't even think Crowell is that much better than what I expect him to be. I just think he was more in line with my expectations. I gave him a B minus. Um, Crowell improved his shooting percentages basically across the board, upped his rebounding, career high rate in rebounding. He, he About what he scored last year. I think he's at 12 per game last year. He's at 11 per game this year. But again, like, this is what I expected mostly from Crowell, except he shot even better than I thought he would shoot. So, I, I think the biggest I've learned I think the biggest chasm on Stephen Crowell is I I think my expectations are just different than maybe what other people expect from a starting Big Ten center. Um, but I give him B minus because I it's kind of what I expected. C plus for me for Crowell. I would love to know what uh, Justin's grade is on him because it's going to be very low. But I think that the thing is for me and, and you're right about the expectations. You have been pretty consistent with the fact that he's not really he is who he is and he's not really gonna to get a ton better. I did expect him as, you know, a, a, a late kind of an experienced player, a five that's had many years under his belt, to be a little bit stronger in the post, especially defensively. Um, and I felt like for me, like, yeah, that's why he's a C. He's kind of like right at that average point for me, like C plus. He's, he's he offensively, I think he did improve. And I think there was some games where he took over and I felt like his shooting percentage was better. Some of those hook shots down low, like he became more consistent with them versus, you know, shooting bricks from there all the time, like he was in previous years. So I think that's better. But at the same time, the defensive issues and just the lack of overall strength and size down low really hurt us. So for me, C plus, but yeah, just kind of average, I guess, with me for Crow. Yeah, and defensively, you're not wrong. There were, there were moments where he was really bad. Is really bad defensively. 
um, which fit into a, a common theme. Give me, uh, give me your Hepburn grade. Let, let, that's the last one we got up here. Yeah, so I want to preface this by saying Hepburn is a really important part of our team, but it's about expectation. So for me, coming into the season, I expected Hepburn to be likely one of our leading scorers, a guy who took over games, who definitely, he was going to be more of a distributor, right? Which he was, and he did that. But also, I expected more from him overall offensively. He had a huge dip. So I'm going C+. Plus. And, and I know that a lot of people are graded him higher. And I know that some people were calling him as their MVP. I get all that. He was super important. And if I was grading him just on the season, it would be different. It would be higher, but he did not, he, he, he's pretty much right in my expectations in the sense that like, I, he didn't really blow me out. He, he didn't really way underperform. He just, I wanted him to be better offensively and more impactful than he was, especially in that middle part of the season where he just wasn't scoring at all. So I think my grade's probably a little lower than most people, but my expectations were just higher for him. Yeah. No, I think that's an important distinction, right? Well, how, what you expect him to be. And you're right, man. That middle part of the season, if you go look at his game log, it's like two points, four points, six points, four points. Um, it was brutal. Like that Rutgers game we got blown out. I think he scored four points in that game on the road, and, and that was kind of the start of the swoon. I went B just, just because – and, and maybe I could, should have could have been my time thinking about it because you make a good point. I expected a lot too, and I expect him to shoot a lot better. Like I expected with better pieces around, he'd be more of a spot up shooter, would shoot better. He didn't shoot that well from three, but there were moments in the season where he was the best player on the court. Like that Purdue game down the stretch that we won. I mean, I, he outplayed everybody in that game, nine of 12. Like he, I thought down the stretch, he's such an engine for this team, <clears throat> point of attack defense. And I know there's people who, and I, I would be one of these people too, would say like his defense probably wasn't as good as advertised, but take him out of the mix and then see what happens to the point of attack yeah. defense. It, it would fall off a cliff. So I'm going to go B. Um, I think he did play better than I thought, than he, than he did last year. There was improvement. I expect him to shoot a little bit better, but I also think he showed a lot of why he's kind of the engine of this team. Right. But yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it, I, it's, it's just one of those things where it's all it comes down to expectations, you know, and that's that's the difference because he was such a critical part of our team last year and he was again this year. But, you know, it's just kind of like you, that dip just really kind of stings, you know? Yeah, he, we never really fully got everybody on track at the same time. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, give me your, I know you guys and I listened to your show, by the way, you're you and Justin Sean Gray Gard, it was a really good show. And I encourage everybody to go listen to it. I thought it was balanced. Um, so. I know you guys already did your great guard grades, but uh, if you don't mind, what was your great guard grade for this year? Yeah, B minus um, for me. And I think that, again, great guard is what we expect. We have issues with him in game coaching. We've said that. We have issues with with what he did. Ultimately, he brought in the player that we needed. He brought in AJ Store. He was able to have an incredible start to the season, which I know – you know, I, I talked about with Justin, it's, it often gets overlooked. We were eight and one in conference. We were six in the country. That was not by accident. Like we were good. We were playing really well. We had a tough schedule. So he has to get credit for that. And yes, he has to get, you know, criticism for everything else that happened throughout the year. And there's no doubt about that. But for me, B minus basically pretty much at what my expectations were for him. Right there with you. B minus. I, I thought he improved. I thought he would improve. I thought overall this – people aren't going to like hearing this, but I thought overall this season is kind of a success. You got from the NIT to a five seed. Um, a success doesn't mean this is the ultimate destination spot. It just means along the journey of a road, like this portion of that journey was successful in my opinion. Um, so It's improvement. It's improvement. And there was improvement, which I've been screaming from the top of my lungs. Like we improved, which is what I asked for, which is what I, in order for me to say that in my opinion, that he deserves to keep his job, it was improvement. And we did that. We finished fifth in the conference and we were a five seed. Now you could argue whether the five seed was too high or whatever, but no one's arguing that we were worthy of a tournament bid. We beat Purdue. We went all the way to the final of the big 10 tournament. There are things that you have to look at from a positive light. It's hard when you see what happened in the first round of the tournament and what happened against Matt James Madison and everything that happened in February. I get all of the, the people that want him go gone. I totally understand it, but like, you're right. I mean, ultimately he did improve. There's really no doubting that. Nope. All right. There with, does he need to improve again next year to keep, I think training? so. I think he well, does. Let me ask you that. I, Cause that's something you said, and I wanted to pin you on it and not to take any more of your time. Cause I know yeah. I've already taken 30 minutes, but if you're saying he needs to improve next year to keep his job, does that mean he needs to be a four seed or better? It's really more for me about like, obviously making the tournament is a must. 
And but it's about the performances. I don't want to see a massive dip in February again. Like a, a midseason drop off can't happen. There has to be more consistency. And what I, where I think really needs to happen now is that in game stuff that has to improve. Now, if it, if it is what it is and this is all he's going to be, then we can have a different discussion. But I do think some of that in game coaching has to get better. And we cannot allow our team to have that big of a dip and lose games like the Michigan game. Right? Those things can't happen. Now he did improve. So next year it doesn't have to necessarily be a higher seed. It's about being a better team i think that's a very fair way to put it because if it's about being a higher if you're going to next year saying you need to be a four seed or better then you might as well fire them now no no you it's about being a better team we we definitely had major major holes this year and that has to be better we can't be a poor defensive team again right like that's it's not gonna work yeah no I, I'm, I'm there with you i think there's elements of this team and by the way i kind of think elements of this team will get cleaned up well we gotta see what happens in the offseason um let's finish your team mvp this year yeah, so for me, it's AJ Store. Um, I know there's discussion with, you know, Hepper and I was on the Discord earlier. I heard some of that, but 16.8 points a game without him, like you think about most valuable player, without him, we are a sh a, just a shell of ourselves offensively. And I think he changed the game. He spread the floor in a different way. He allowed other people to get open shots. Like when you don't have that kind of gravity on the court, which he produced, everyone else's game offensively it takes, a, it takes a hit. And so I think because of that, we were we were a bad defensive team, but we were a really strong offensive team. And there is no chance we're even remotely close to that offensively without that one player because of his scoring and his ability to open things up for other people. I hear the argument about Chucky Hepper, and I think he obviously had a good year, and I like everything he's he's done. But for me, most valuable, it's it's story. Even though there were times where I was upset with him and I didn't like part of his game. I don't think it's I think it's really difficult to argue against that because without his production, where were we? I think it's Stephen Crowell. No, I kid. I I kid I kid I kid before anybody. I it, to me it's it's happened to me. It's because I think there is a discussion and everybody this has been a, a de like forever people talk about what does MVP mean best player? Does it mean most important, right. the most irreplaceable player? Um for me it just means like kind of most important. I think age, there's an argument certainly that AG starts the most talented player, has the highest upside, is the most skilled, whatever. I think Hebron's the most important because I think he gives you things in a lot of areas of the game, right? Like AJ Storr was a great volume scorer, a great athlete, good in transition, got to the line. We need that. Um, he he averaged like 2.9 rebounds per 40 minutes. That is like crazy, yeah. not impactful. Uh, and this is not an AJ Storr, I'm going to crush you session. Like, he, again, I've talked about, he, we are so much better because he was on the team this year. Johnny Davis averaged like seven a game and is not the athlete AJ Storr is. Um he doesn't play defense. The reason we talked about this, the reason Damask is being guarded by Klesman down the stretch is because AJ Store, Greg Garden didn't trust AJ Store to play in that role. Um, I just think he there was too many spots in the game where he wasn't impacting it. Whereas Hepburn uh, was impacting the offense by distributing, by bringing the ball up. He's the guy that is is when they the other teams put pressure on you. Like he's the guy releasing that pressure. He's the guy guarding the other team's point guard, consistently playing defense. He. I, I just think he impacts the game in more ways. Um, and I don't think there's a wrong answer here between those two. It might were, be hard to get it. Were you able to judge the discord on that? Like, I don't know, what, what, what were people's thoughts on uh, some team MVP stuff? I'm not sure if you had a chance to do that. I'm, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I, I'm no, curious. Because no, no. I think I, that there, there really, there can be, I think it's, I wonder, I wonder if you did a poll, and maybe you should put a, a Twitter poll about, about this. I would be interested to see kind of what people think about, um, you know, the, the MVP discussion, because, I totally hear you on, on Hepper. And I think that's a very fair point. Um, but, you know, I just think when you look at the, this, the overall production, because, okay, so we were poor defensively and yes, you could, you could put that on AJ store and that's a lot of that, but like the only reason we won the games that we did early in the season, the only reason we were even anywhere we were is because of our offensive production. So that to me is just falls squarely onto him because he opened it up for everyone else. So I'm really interested to see what the fan base thinks about this and maybe it's 50, 50, who knows, but I think there's really more of an argument to be made for store just because like without him, we're, it, let's say Hepburn got hurt. And I know that, that that'd be big, but if McGee was in there and Klesmid and other guys like Blackwell, I think you can make up for it a little bit. I don't think anyone's making up for, for AJ stores, offensive production. See, that's really interesting because I feel like if Hepburn went down, the team would have more issues than if store went down. So I think if store went down, you'd slide Blackwell in there. Um, listen, either way you get hurt, right? You're not better if you right. Way. But I think you slide Blackwell. There's nobody that's taking Hepburn's playmaking ability, ball handling, defense. Like you put Kari, if you put McGee in there for 30 minutes, like 
that's going to be a disaster. And that's not a shot at McGee. Um, I just think, I think Hepburn, again, so much, of, and I want to dig more into this. And this is, again, I, the last thing I want to do is take this opportunity. A lot of times when you're talking about like, who's the MVP, it ends up becoming a discussion about dragging somebody else down, right? Well, this guy's not the MVP because of he does all these things poorly. And that's not what I want to do a store. But I think defensively, he was really pretty bad. And the reason that we had to win games with offense is because we couldn't stop people. I think store played a, a slightly larger role in that. And it's not just store a hundred percent. We talked about crowd, like crowd mm-hmm. was poor in rim defense this year. Um, I think there was a lot of AJ. St- I think we maybe sacrificed parts of our game, our, our continuity for AJ store in ways. Yeah. And in that sense, I think Hepburn, I think Hepburn impacted the game more all around and it was more of an engine for the team. Um, but I get the argument for store too. store is great. Mm-hmm. This is again the last thing I want to do here, and it sounds like I am. I don't want to drag AJ Store down to prop up uh, Chucky Hepburn either. Yeah, they're both incredibly valuable this year. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that. I'm just going to go a quick side tangent. Your comment about rim protection. It's so interesting watching the tournament now and seeing guys like Klingon and oh, Edie and Danger and Illinois. Like, man, oh man, do we desperately need some rim protection? Like these guys are just camping out in the paint, just swatting everything away forcing people to take tough shots down low. And here, when you play the Badgers, you just get shots that you want. And that was, that, that's the biggest thing for me going into next season. Like, I don't ever want that again. Sometimes people talked about, Oh, we were slow before and we had, but we had an identity and we were good defensively and man, we can't let that happen again. I agree. It, Oh, I lost you for a sec. You, you legged or I legged. Um, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I, th- I think it's. I think it might be me. Uh, really quick, I'll give you some from the Discord team MVP stuff. Eilers has store. Um, let's see, double badger C has MVP Chucky. Uh, Cannonell goes Blackwell. I love Cannonell, man. Um, White Marlin, AJ Store, not even close. So I'm just reading down the list here. Uh, Tyler Wall, MVP for Safa. So I don't know. It, it looks pretty mixed. Um, which which maybe for a team like this makes sense a team that was kind of inconsistent and all over the board. Maybe that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think that the, dis- the differing opinions make total sense. And th- that's why it's hard to make a lot out of this season, right? There was so much up and down. There was so much like back and forth and good and bad. And so, yeah, I think all that's what makes this discussion interesting, right? Because when you're looking at expectations and then you look at where they are, I mean, there's so much to, to sort of unpack from this season, which is interesting stuff. Yeah. And we're going to keep doing that. And I do want to say one final thing, like, I feel like I came across as too harsh on store. Like we're not the same team this year without store. And it was, he was, it, it was an A plus addition, right? Whether, so I, I, going going to have to go and find someone else to take some of what age store gave you. And other people are going to have to step up. Cause that is a huge offensive chunk that we're losing. And it's the thing with store that I talked about. And we talked, I don't know, but again, I don't think this gets talked about enough is he makes other teams game plan for him and he creates space for everybody else. That's hard to replace. Yep. I mean, you talk about 17 points a game from store. You talk about 10 points from wall. I mean, yeah. what are we? We have got to go get some players, man. Or we go back to 50 to 55 games and we just. We hey, just, Ray, if we play good defense, I can live with it. But I do like Fiddler, by the way. I really think I like his film. I think he will be a nice addition. Hopefully we can land him. I do too. All right. We're going to wrap it up there. He is Rajiv over at uh, the Bucky Report. Also at Rajiv Badgers. Obviously, we are always better when he's on here as well. Uh, we could, like I said, we couldn't get Justin on the show. He is in a basketball detox center locked away where they only have football on the TVs. <laughs> uh, Rajiv, any last thoughts, man, on like just the grades, anything? Uh... No, man, we just need to, we need to improve. We can't have another, we, we, we need to, that's what the improvement has to come from defense has to come from, you know, overall performances. Like this was a tough year and it was a really tough ending. And I just don't want that to happen. I want to feel good about this team. And so make these impacts now. Make the transfer portal happen so that we can get excited about next season. Yeah, that's well said. All right. He is Rajiv. I'm Ryan on Wisconsin, and we'll talk later.